The UX cameras are capable of using a wide variety of recording modes. The UX90 has you know, ultra high def and high def and even standard def and 720p. And then the UX180 adds even more onto that. The more expensive camcorder obviously has more features to it and it has so many recording modes. Last time I tried to count, I believe I got up to 57 different options between the frame rates and the frame sizes and the file formats and whether it's standard def or high def and 16 by nine or four by three. So it can be intimidating, it can be overwhelming to try to figure out what should I be using? So in this video, I wanna discuss the recording formats, how you choose them, and how you decide among them to know which is best for your project. So first of all, let's go to the system mode menu. All the changes that we're gonna do here are in the system mode menu. First menu item we're looking at is rec mode. Rec mode is where we choose what the file format is that we're gonna be storing the footage in. You got three choices, MOV, MP4, and AVC HD. The choice between MOV and MP4, to me, that really boils down to how are you gonna edit the footage? What file format does your editor prefer? Or your client, if they've requested specifically, you know, do, do they ask you for a QuickTime movie because they wanna edit it on Macintosh? Or do you normally edit your own footage and you do it on a Windows system so you're more familiar with the MP4s? That's really all that the choice is because all the recording formats, the frame rates, everything is all identical whether you choose MOV or MP4. So you just have to choose which one of those you wanna use. The third choice is AVC HD. AVC HD is a standardized file format. It does record high def footage. It just, it's a very low bandwidth recording format. So if you need extremely long record times, AVC HD really has something to offer. But if you're looking for quality, the bit rates are much higher in the MOV and MP4 choices so really, I wouldn't really even look at AVC HD unless I needed specifically that the client has asked for AVC HD, or there are a couple of unique things AVC HD does. The only way you can record 720p on this camera is using AVC HD in the PM mode. And the only way that you can record standard definition, normal NTSC or PAL video, is to use the SA recording mode in AVC HD. So I sum it up as, if you need super long recording times, and I'm talking hours and hours and hours on a memory card, or you need 720p, or you need standard def, then you can consider AVC HD. But if those are not your primary focus, let's just forget it, and let's use either MOV or MP4, whichever's more appropriate for your editing situation. Now we go into the rec format, and here we have to determine the frame size and the frame rate of what we're gonna be recording. So first, let's look at the frame size. UHD and FHD. How do they compare? Well, look at this graphic. UHD is literally as big as four FHD frames. There's literally four times as many pixels in a UHD frame as there is in an FHD frame. So generally, obviously you'd think, hey, I wanna use UHD. And generally, throughout this discussion here, you're gonna, you're gonna find that I generally go along with the idea that more is better. So whenever possible, I use UHD but there are still some good reasons for choosing FHD. There are two limitations that the UX90 has when going to UHD. Number one, it can't do all the frame rates. It can only do 23.98 or 2997. It cannot do 59.94. Or if you're using a PAL camera, it can only do 25, it can't do 50. So if you need that looking through a window live reality news look, can't really get that in UHD on the UX90. You can get it in FHD, in 1080 59.94p, 1080 basically 60p, that'll give you that live look. You can't get that on UHD on the UX90. And the second thing is your field of view is limited on the UX90. When you are in normal HD, then you have a wide angle equivalent of about 24 millimeter, 24.5 millimeter lens on a stills camera. Very wide angle, the widest wide angle on a large sensor fixed lens camera. But when you go into UHD, it crops in some. You lose some of that field of view. You actually gain some in the terms of telephoto, but you lose it on the wide angle. So if you're doing a nature documentary and you're trying to pick out a tree frog on a branch way the heck over there, maybe UHD makes sense. It'll get you closer. But if you're doing an interview in a very small office and you need as much wide angle as you can get, you probably don't want to choose UHD for that scenario. You'd probably want to go with FHD. That's not a consideration on the UX180. UX180 keeps the same field of view throughout. All right, now let's decide about frame rates. 
Here we're going to be talking about what aesthetic feeling do you want the footage to have? Do you want it to look like a movie? Uh, uh, cinema? I mean, obviously your lighting and everything is going to have to support that, but if you want the motion, the cinematic cadence of 24 frame per second film, then you might want to use 23.98p. Or if you're using a 50 hertz camera, 25p. Or do you want the live look, you know, a, a news broadcast or a live event, a concert, something like that. Anything where you need that immediate looking through a window look, if that's the case, you probably want to use the 59.94p. 59.94 gives you many more motion samples per second and gives you that live look. And on the 59.94 hertz cameras, you actually have a third choice, which is 29.97p, which is kind of halfway in between, sort of. It, it kind of looks a little filmic, but not as stuttery and strobey as 24p. But it doesn't look anywhere near as live as 59.94p, so it's kind of in between. So once you determine what your frame size should be and your file format and your frame rate, then the last thing we have to determine is your bit rate. On the UX90, you don't really have a choice about bit rate. Each format has a bit rate associated with it. 1080p is always 50 megabits. It's just the way it is. UHD is always 100 megabits. That's it. So you don't have a choice. On UX180, you do have somewhat of a choice. UHD is always fixed. You can't change that. But when it comes to regular HD, you can choose between 50 megabits and 200 megabits. And there's even one option for 100 megabits. Basically, it's a quality versus recording time and, and data management question. If you're going to have to be transferring this footage to someone else, you might want smaller file sizes. So you might want to choose a 50 megabit. If you want the ultimate quality, use the bigger number. Frequently bigger is better, and it is in this case too. For 1080 60p, the 100 megabit is going to look better than the 50 megabit. For 24p or 30p, the 200 megabit all intra is going to look better than the 50 megabit. I know that that's really a lot of detail, a lot of information. Now that you know what it can do, Let's, let's, let's bring it home by saying that really, all you really need to know is the answer to four simple questions. If you can answer these questions, then you'll know exactly which recording mode you should choose. And those four questions are, how are you gonna edit on Windows? Well, you probably want MP4. If you can edit on a Macintosh, you probably want MOV. Do you need ultra high def or regular high def? Are you looking for the most detail or are you looking for you know faster turnaround in the editing suite? And is 1080 enough? If 1080 is enough, and if that's what your clients ask for, well, let's go 1080. What frame rate, what, what aesthetic are you looking for? Are you looking for a film style look? Or are you looking for the live reality TV look? That'll let you know what frame rate you should choose. 24p, maybe 30p, or even 60p. And finally, what kind of budget for space do you have? Are, are you going to have terabytes of hard drive space? You have no problem with bitrate? then let's choose a big, meaty, beefy bit rate, you know, the 100 megabits or 200 megabits and get all the quality that we can. Or maybe you're limited in space, maybe you need to go with a 50 megabit. When you know the answers to those four questions, then you'll know exactly which format to pick. So I hope that makes it make more sense. I hope it demystifies it. And I hope it actually gives you a little bit more confidence in your camera because while there's an overwhelming number of choices, that also means this camera is able to meet just about any challenge you're gonna give it. You know, if you get hired to shoot a live soccer match in India, you can set it to a mode that is suitable for that. Or if you get hired to do a short film for somebody in America, you know now what settings and quality and, and things that you should set in order to be able to meet that challenge too. UX cameras are extremely versatile and hopefully there'll be a direct match with whatever project you're doing. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the rest of the series for even more information, tips and tricks about how to use your UX camera. Panasonic.